Hello again, Sam here. Welcome back to another installment of our devlog series. In today's video, I'm going to talk about some of the main shops you can explore in Maida. I'll be using the Apothecary, the Boa, and the Blacksmith from the main town of our world as examples. I'll be covering the development and writing behind the shops and shopkeepers in them, what services they provide, how crafting is involved, what unique specializations they offer, shop progression, and how story and quests play their part in the shop systems themselves. Before we begin, I just want to quickly announce that we now have a Steam page up and available for you to wishlist. I've left a link down in the description below, so be sure to add it to your wishlist as it would be greatly helpful to us and we would be incredibly appreciative of you to do so. Now, let's dive in. First, we wanted to write the characters for the main shops in a slightly different way than you would perhaps generally expect. Each of our main shops, for the most part, has two keepers. For our three examples, the apothecary has a husband and wife, the boa has a master and apprentice, and the blacksmith has a father and daughter. While this is not particularly unusual, we wanted to remain consistent with our writing style. Our writing style being that we want to reimagine the writing within the aspects of what makes a game feel familiar. As the world we are writing is masked in sorrow, we wanted to find ways of elevating certain characters to offset the instances of sadness. In this case, we thought it would be interesting to have the shopkeepers and workshops themselves feel like places of warmth and comfort. As we intend on having plenty of playtime spent talking, crafting and shopping in these places, we didn't want them to feel mundane or lonely. That's why we also incorporated things like fireplaces and warm beams of light coming through the windows to make you feel at home. For the UI, we wanted to maintain the same style as the main menu. Since this is a game all about exploration, having a journal and paper style of UI feels nice and organic. It gives the feeling that you are able to document your adventures as you go, so I think this style will remain throughout the game. For each workshop, there will be two UI menus, a shop UI and a crafting UI. For example, here in the Apothecary, you can purchase potions that are already in stock and depending on progression, the stock may develop and flourish over time. If you wish to craft your own potions, however, you can always brew whatever you need or want to experiment with at the brewing machine. This way, you'll have the option to simply purchase potions if diving into potion brewing isn't necessarily your cup of tea. Each workshop will have a few functions when it comes to goods and services. The extent of these services will be completely up to your willingness to explore. For example, it's no surprise that the apothecary will offer a facility to brew potions and remedies. However, there may be plenty of opportunity to upgrade and expand on the apothecary's abilities to brew greater things. The same could be said for the boa. There may also be opportunity to upgrade the crafting stations to work with more exotic and finer woods. Perhaps it is up to you to seek out and discover new things to progress. Since this game is all about exploration, we want to make sure we allow this theme to live within as many places as possible. As I mentioned, much of how these workshops will operate will depend on exploration. In the context of crafting, you'll be able to play a fair role when it comes to crafting equipment and consumables to aid your journey. For example, the blacksmith of the main town is quite renowned for his smithing abilities. As his role pertains to the town, however, he himself nor his daughter have the ability to venture out seeking newer and grander metals. You do. You'll be able to explore caverns and caves full of ore that may not have even been discovered yet. We don't aim to make the mining and gathering of ore or any other material, as I mentioned with potion brewing, compulsory to an enjoyable and extensive experience. Not everyone wants to pick up a pickaxe and mine just to get a better sword. The option, however, to expand on what you can craft and therefore create and even invent will always be there. The shops that we are covering today will not always be the only ones of their kind. Each settlement throughout the world will always have a variety of shops. There will, of course, be many places to find different blacksmiths, general stores, apothecaries and the like. One of the main purposes of having workshops placed around the world, outside of the theme of adventure, is that not everyone in the main town is the best craftsperson. There are plenty of places where different races may specialize in different crafts. 
Once again, this plays into the central theme of exploration. While we intend on making the main town workshops as cozy and welcoming as possible with extensive mechanics, that doesn't mean that there aren't any other master craftsmen and women to discover. There is going to be plenty to explore when it comes to the narrative aspect of these shops. We haven't quite balanced how much side quests and such will play into the main storyline and quest line. We want to preserve the idea that you can explore any aspect of our game fairly openly without other aspects getting too tangled amongst each other. For example, we don't want you to have to complete a massive portion of the main story in order to simply wander around and collect interesting potion ingredients, if that's all you wanted to do. There will, however, be plenty of quests and story to experience for the main workshops that will offer fun rewards like weapons, armor, potions, workshop upgrades and the like. We plan on having plenty of workshop quests and small stories that revolve around spirits, monsters, loot and all kinds of interesting things. It's tricky to balance, but like I said, we want to have as many aspects of the game you wish to explore as tastefully unimpeded as possible. We have always found it exciting coming across different settlements and RPGs and adventure games and seeing what new and interesting equipment you can find. We want to replicate that same feeling with a bit of extra fun. We want to tie each mechanic, such as gathering, brewing, mining and crafting, to a workshop system that feels inviting, engaging and of course rewarding. There is still plenty of work to be done of course, and we're not quite there just yet, but I think we have a fairly solid grasp of how we want to fully execute this system with the development and plans I've explained thus far. At the same time, if you guys have any ideas or suggestions, please do let us know as it's always fun to share thoughts. I also hope that you enjoyed this devlog. For this project, it's incredibly difficult to create a traditional devlog series that touches on the current development of the project, considering that it's four years old now. We will eventually start doing this, but for now, we simply want our devlog series to touch on certain aspects of this game that we have developed a fair amount. So, if there's a particular aspect of this game that you want to know more about, let us know. Some of you already have, such as programming and world building, and we have taken note. So thank you all very much for your input. For now, however, I want to thank you all very much for joining me as always. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you again soon.